So, okay, so, so last one. Um, one minute. Uh, I'm just on the pen option to be very thick. So if um, so, RMK, as you remember, is a Noetherian local ring with residue field K. Um, if this is a complete domain, then there is a constant E H K of uh, R I. So remember, I is always a ideal of finite co-length such that length of R mod uh, I Q. And here, okay, let me, I'll just say it clearly. So this, I'm just recalling the last time's theorem. So D is a dimension of the ring. So we are still quite have not proved the existence of the limit for arbitrary module. So this is what I'm doing. So here it is, this we have proved as a complete domain. So, so remember we- I'm sorry, I think you forgot to share the screen or do you plan to share the, the, the screen? We don't see a screen. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, perfect. One, yeah. <laughs> so uh, last time we were on the way to prove the existence of Hilbert Kunj multiplicity. So we had proved the result when R is a complete domain. And uh, so now this, in fact, uh, this is, um, we can prove it for arbitrary module. Huh? So, so this is a theorem. Oh, this is terrible. So what is happening? So, so let M be a finitely generated module. R module. Then, so here the D, D was a dimension of the ring. Remember? So there, again, there is a constant depending on M and I. Now I'm saying it is positive. And here, in fact, it was greater than one, such that length of the length function a, M upon IQ M is equal to E H K of uh, M I Q to the power D. Here D is again the dimension of the ring actually. So, So we have all ingredients to prove the result now. So what we'll do, uh, again, you can assume R is complete local uh, ring and K is a residue field, which is algebraically closed. Then consider the prime filtration. So let zero equal to M zero containing M one M be a prime filtration of M. So I'll quickly recall what is a, how do you, uh, so that means uh, definition is that means MI plus one of MI is isomorphic to R mod PI for some prime ideal. So how do you get it? It's very easy. Just uh, you are saying that, um, let me quickly say, uh, M has an associate prime. So there is a ideal P1 contain, uh, this is sorry, this is ring R inside M. So now you can take this to be your M1, this one. Now go modulo M upon M1, repeat the same process. 
So there will be R mod P2 sitting inside this. Now pull back P2 all the way to M. And this is the way you get the primary uh, prime filtration. So. Okay. Now we have already proved the additivity of the length fu uh, function. So that implies that your uh, length of m upon i q m should be equal to summation length of uh, m i plus 1 upon m i into i q m i plus 1 upon m i plus uh, some element of order d minus 1. Okay, uh, but uh, mi plus one mod mi is a is a is just a complete local domain. So applying the previous result, what you get is it is equal to e uh, summation i running e h k of uh, mi plus one upon mi at i q to the power d plus order q to the power d minus 1. Here, if uh, you have mi plus this r mod pi is of dimension less than d, then uh, this will get absorbed here. So I can, without uh, losing anything, I can just take the elements where mi plus 1 upon mi is equal to d. If they're less than d, they'll get absorbed here. So it's OK. So uh, such for mi plus 1 upon mi for such thing, yeah. which is isomorphic to rpi, it, it means that pi belongs to lambda. So if I look at r localized at pi, then it's a field. So the prime filtration gives me, um, which is m0 pi modulo 1 m pi. So many of them will actually uh, become zero. So it means the number of times the modules which are isomorphic to this one will occur in this filtration is exactly equal to the length of the module MPI. So I just look at this again and it tells me this is a summation of E H K R mod P I uh, length of uh, MP uh, where P is in lambda. into q to the power d yeah uh, plus order q to the power d minus one so you have this length formula now in this formula if you go modulo q to the power d so it just tells you ehk of m with respect to i is same as summation ehk r mod p um, Pi, P in into length of MP. So this is the final uh, thing. You have proved the length formula as well as the or the second assertion. I didn't write it anyway. So this associative formula. This is called so associativity formula. formula. Okay, so, so this associativity formula has a nice corollary. So what it says uh, is the following. Suppose you R is a domain. So you're again, the condition is R M K, where R is a domain. Then your multiplicity of M for I is nothing but multiplicity of the ring R at I into the length of or uh, rank of uh, this thing. So this is rank of M as a R. So that means 
basically studying the multiplicity for module boils down to studying the multiplicity for the ring so you can always assume your ring to be a module uh, you can just study for rings and another thing if i take any other ring which is a finite module over r then i can recover the multiplicity back and forth so let me say it uh, corollary properly so r to s a finite map of rings uh where m is local then e h k of uh, s of extended ideal that is the problem is same as e h k of the ring r at i into rank of uh, r at s so if i have this ring which i understand well or this ring which i understand well in the sense i know what is the multiple hk multiplicity of this or this then i can recover the another one merely by knowing the rank so i have given you exercise so these uh, one example was a veronese sub ring inside a polynomial ring so remember polynomial ring we uh, or power series ring we understand very well because the length of the each length function is actually equal to q to the power t so is equal to 1 the quotient uh, and then uh, then the ring of invariants if i take so g is a fine suppose g is a group of order finite order acting on a polynomial ring or on a polynomial ring ring r then r g to r is a finite extension so i give you another exercise but uh, that is before proving the existence of hk multiplicity so it says suppose you are in the situation r m k where characteristic is positive then multiplicity of of the ring r with respect to i mod d factorial so this is a dimension of the ring is less than equal to e h k of i is less than equal to e of i so is uh, everything is okay so far so so immediately tells you something it says if dimension of your ring r is 1 then your e h k of i is same as e of i so is an integer always is nothing makes there's no changes okay so uh, now we are looking at the uh, some properties of the hk multiplicity so what so you have this number so what does it mean i mean what what kind of uh, what, what kind of properties of the ring it reflects so the first thing first so is if you know irregular multiplicity it is one if if and only if your uh, ring is regular of course provided the ring is unmixed so here also the same thing it's a formally unmixed suppose this is an important assumption formally unmixed means if i take a completion uh, all the all the pri prime all the irreducible components are of same dimension so then e h k of r is 1 if and only if your um, r is regular so we are not going to prove anything so of, of course if r is regular then e h k of it's a, you can assume it's a power series ring for completion and it's easy to check uh, that this is one for the converse uh, that takes a bit of a that's all 
lot of work and it's uh, given by Watanabe and Yoshida, I think. So remember that uh, if you recall the first result uh, we stated of Kunz was saying that length of length of R mod, this is with respect to maximal ideal. So I should say maximal ideal. And Q is equal to QD, which is that means uh, I'm saying that length of uh, yes. Hmm. QT is one if and only if R is regular. So this uh, so this this uh, this assertion is certainly um stronger so this is saying i don't have to look at one length if i take a symptotic length which is happens to be one then it implies that r is regular so here i would like to mention that this in fact this length this limit function of uh, this length where q tends to infinity was actually thought by kunz and he somehow he thought this limit doesn't exist but he did think that this limiting function will be a something very important so many years later, in another context, in the context of number theory, Monsky considered this limit. And he proved its existence when he came to know that Kunz also has thought about it. So in his honor, instead of putting, say, Hilbert Samuel uh, multiplicity, he called it Hilbert Kunz multiplicity. That's one thing. Another thing uh, here, I would, uh, you may wonder why we have a formally unmixed uh, condition. So it's important uh, because uh, lower dimensional component uh, don't contribute anything to the multiplicity. So let me uh, give a example. Suppose if I take a power series ring in three variables and I look at x, y, comma, x, z, this ring. Suppose this is R. Then E, H, K of R. Uh, or maximal ideal, I mean, is same as E H K of the ring K. That's what in associativity formula has proved is X, which of course we know one, but certainly your ring R is not regular. So, so are there any questions so far? Okay, so now perhaps uh, this uh, following lemma might be one of the reasons it uh, really caught on with the uh, community algebraist community as the following. If you remember, if I have two ideals i and j, uh, so this is, uh, let me recall here now, uh, is containing j, I mean, they are m primary ideal. Again, I'm in a local setup uh, such that Multiplicity of i, oh, this is bad. So, so this is your hypothesis. If such that e of i is same as e of j, this implies that uh, j is contained in the i closure. So, here uh, perhaps uh, you had to assume your. Uh, Ring is again formally unmixed, just to avoid the unnecessarily lower dimensional component. So, and in fact, it's a converse is obvious if uh, so. So this is not the thing. So, so the integral closure versus uh, usual Hilbert Samuel multiplicity. The here the tight closure versus HK multiplicity run all exactly parallel. So. It says if uh, so, consider I containing J and uh, are uh, formally unmixed, then J is contained in the tight closure of I star. If and only if 
e of hk of uh, i is same as e hk of j. So most rest of my talks, perhaps I won't give much of a proof. So let us see the proof of uh, at least the easier, easier side. So suppose if J is containing I star. So I want to prove that uh, in that case, uh, HK multiplicity is same as of I same as HK multiplicity of J. So what you do for this, the very J is contain I star and so for any element of j, I, I would find uh, x belonging to j. For example, there exists some cx such that uh, cx, um, C, I mean, this is not a multiplication, it's just a uh, um, subscript. x to the power q belongs to iq for all q. Since j is finitely generated for each x we have, so we just collect the generator, cx for each generator and pick the product. So which of course will, uh, will belong outside the minimal prime. So belong to R is zero, I forgot, up or down for, such that C into, uh, 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 I don't know what am I doing it. Such that the C into J of uh, IQ is contained in IQ. So this implies that uh, um, I look at this uh, module JQ mod IQ. It is a R mod uh, IQ colon C module. As a finitely generated module. Uh, so uh, so this so uh, in the sense uh, if generator of jq will su suffice but uh, remember if j is generated by m elements j frobenius q will also be generated by m elements so in fact uh, there exist m copies you can have uh, such that uh, direct sum of r r i q colon c is subjects to jq upon iq. So this implies uh, length of this one is less than or equal to length of this. But what is the length of this? So it is length of uh, r iq minus uh, length r upon jq. This, this one, this length, uh, which is equal to m into, which is less than equal to m into length of r of uh, i q c. So, so this, this module, uh, remember this is uh, over r mod c, where c doesn't belong to any minimal prime. So dimension of r mod c is less than dimension of is strictly less than d. So this is a mod of order q to the power d. So here in, in fact I can write it. Order. So here I don't have to write. So I go modulo q to the power d and take the limit. So which implies uh, your EHK of I minus EHK of J is zero. Okay, so this is one thing. What, how about the converse? Uh, converse, uh, so suppose, I'm not going to prove, but I would like to mention something. Suppose your EHK of I colon one more element, say XR, is same as EHK of I, so you would like to say that X belongs to the tight closure of I. So this is what you want. That will prove the converse, but uh, what happens so here? In fact, the result, uh, this is a theorem of uh, Hoekstra-Hineke. It says, if suppose 
X doesn't belong to the tight closure of I star. You remember if the X belongs to tight closure, there should exist C. So in particular, C should exist some MK minus MK plus one independent of Q says that C into XQ, I'm sorry, here I'm writing it, belongs to IQ, et cetera. That means annihilator of IQ colon XQ is intersects this uh, number. I'm here, I'm just going a bit fast. So this one says it's even better if X doesn't belong to I star, so it, the colon shrinks like anything. So, so that's the main point here. So it says uh, the set of C says that uh, C XQ belongs to IQ. These kind of elements, in fact, belong to MQ over K L for some for some constant L. So that means the the annihilator of uh, this IQ colon XQ. This thing shrinks like anything. Uh, it means it is proportional to the power of Q. So that will contribute uh, the length function to be some epsilon to the Q to the power D, something like that. So this is this this is the hardest part to prove actually. And there they use uh, like an element of a small order and the valuation. So they have kind of quote a weaker criteria for tight closure, but they say these are equivalent. So this. Uh, it's a tricky argument, but it's um, uh, very intricate. So you can look up. So th this, is a, this is a very important point that uh, your annihilator is actually keeps shrinking rapidly at the power of Q. So, so that is the property of uh, HK multiplicity. Now I would, uh, I'm actually not covering all the results. I cannot cover all the important results, but you would like to know what else uh, kind of what in the, okay, tight closure is one thing, but there are other uh, characteristic P singularities of the ring, which EHK tells. So let me um, quote a few of them. So one is, uh, I think EHK of M, first of all, so the philosophy is as follows, is smaller the multiplicity, EHK multiplicity, better the singularity will be. So already you have seen one sample. Uh, if smallest is one here for M. So if it is one, the ring is regular. Nevertheless, suppose your ring is not quite one, but it's uh, still smaller than uh, one plus one upon D factorial. D is the dimension of the ring again. Then, R is Cohen Macaulay and F rational. So I think this result was proved in several steps. Uh, first, some bound involving characteristic P was by Blickel and Inescu, and then this one, this one I'm not sure, maybe Inescu can tell me. So, so the here the point is that, uh, uh, not here, but generally, unlike usual multiplicity, HK multiplicity is not a discrete set. I mean, so it can take many arbitrary values. So one question is, suppose your ring is not regular, then how big the EHK multiplicity can be? So the answer is this is greater than or equal to one plus one upon D factorial into D to the power D. This is just, uh, these are fun facts. Okay. So, uh, uh, sorry. In the previous one, I mean p to the power d. P to the power d. That's what you said. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you, I have not shown you any <coughs> no, uh, non-trivial examples of HK multiplicity. So. That so far cases I have listed like Veronese ring or um, uh, the ring of invariance, etc. Since they come from the polynomial ring, which is doesn't involve any characteristic on in the HK multiplicity, you won't see it there. So, so let me. So when is my time? I have a time. I guess the famous example of Hans and. Mon so uh, when 
monsky had this <coughs> introduced later on the he computed uh, the multiplicity for the next non trivial class of ring which is uh, say plane curve modulo you can go a cubic equation quadric is nothing not so special here right now uh, the cubic equation he did compute uh, for uh, i don't know which one one set of people have proved for characteristic 2 and other people for not char characteristic not equal to book wise and chain but their uh, hk multiplicity is not interesting for us uh, because it doesn't reflect any characteristic and that uh, i will perhaps tell you later the reason for that <clears throat> so let r be this x4 plus uh, in the note side it x4 comma y4 that's uh, that's nonsense so this is x so your kx yz modulo this equation x4 plus y4 plus z4 okay and characteristic of k is p so what they have shown is ehk of r is equal to 3 Plus one upon p square. <clears throat> If p is congruent to plus or minus three mod eight, and equal to three. If p is congruent to plus or minus one mod eight. So this uh, example is actually a. Uh, interesting for several reasons so one reason is it tells you something if i look at hk multiplicity the deformation things are not going to work for the computation of hk multiplicity because suppose there is exist x in r remember the usual multiplicity we always come uh, one way of computing uh, hilbert samuel multiplicity is you go modulo general hyperplane section or general element in fact that's the one definition of your uh, usual multiplicity you keep on going d number of elements the ring becomes quotient ring becomes zero dimensional so just count the length of the ring that's one thing so or what we call reduction ideal but here this kind of induction is not possible because suppose there is some element x in r or i mean maximal ideal such that e h k of uh, r is same as e i don't know why this is doing this of uh, r mod x r then uh, this now your ring is of ring is two dimensional ring cool dimension 2 and this is cool dimension 1 and we have just now seen that for one dimensional ring this is same as r mod x r now uh, for uh, hilbert samuel multiplicity there is no characteristic involved right so this is uh, this is a characteristic free thing so obviously this cannot be equal to this so this is not possible okay now uh, i would also now i'll try to uh, give some <coughs> basically mainly i'll talk here Uh, is the following? What happens? You look at this. Uh, this this is called in geometry. We'll call this as a plane curve because if I look at proj of R, it will become a one-dimensional projective variety, and which is sitting inside the plane, which is P two. So for these kind of curves, we have a a notion of a, a locally free sheep called vector bundles. So I'll I'll very briefly touch on that. So so. slightly generality not the example of monsky so you take k x y z uh, modulo h h is a homogeneous irreducible prime uh, polynomial suppose you have this then the theory is the following suppose an degree of uh, h is d so sorry this is h d we have been using for the dimension of the ring so here i am using for the degree of the polynomial so the general theory tells me the following so this this is my s so call it s s this is I'm so sorry
yes. 3D mod 4 plus L square. I'll just explain all these terms. 4D P2S, where P is the characteristic of the ring. So P is characteristic of S. So what are these L? So L is an integer, is important, is bounded by D minus D3, that's important. And S is also an integer. I'll explain the significance of this one. <coughs> So here, do stop me and ask uh, things. So what happens? You projectify S, so it becomes take a proj of S. So now X is a curve here. So X is a curve. So you have a locally uh, free sheaves on that. So one is a structure sheaf, and then line bundle non-trivial one, so OX one. So what you do, uh, OX one. So. Uh, this is O X. So this is locally the it is locally the ring ring sheaf of on X. So there are three things. Yeah, this is just given by the elements X, Y, and Z. This three copies of O X. One goes to X, one goes to Y, one goes to Z. So degree one degree zero goes to degree one. That's why there's a shift here. So this is a locally free sheaf on X. This is a locally free sheaf on X. So the kernel has to be locally free sheaf on X. So this is called vector bundle here so coming back to the uh, so wait a minute so here uh, if you look at the uh, when the when the people on you know, who work on vector bundle theory they often like to work on something called semi stable vector bundle So that, that means that by definition, if a W is a subsheaf of V, here it is a curve, so everything is a locally free. Otherwise, you have to stick to uh, torsion free. So mu of W, which is degree of W mod rank of W, should be less than or equal to, oh, I'm sorry, mu of V. So that's a, this is some definition. So this definition tells you that a lot of cohomology of uh, V will disappear if V were semi semi stable. So that's one reason people. Uh, in vector bundle, we would like to work in semi-stable because it also forms a bounded family if you restrict some parameters of the vector bundle. So, and on the other hand, any vector bundle have a filtration by say, uh, say something like a V zero and uh, contain V, V n equal to V such that V i plus one upon V i is semi-stable. So you can break it into this kind of factors. Otherwise, so these are called hardener Simon filtration. So, so in character, so that's one thing. So that's useful for the formulation of this one. But one other thing is a problem. If characteristic of k were zero, then if I take pi to be any finite map y to x, then Pullback of so pullback here will be a tensoring with a ring. So pi upper star is semi stable. So V semi stable implies pi upper star V semi stable. However, that's not the case when you come to the characteristic P and the major obstruction is the Frobenius map, which is a finite map. And you start with the semi stable bundle, pi upper star V may not be semi stable. So you may start, okay, I'll start with a hardener cement filtration of V where every sub quotient is semi stable. But when I pull up that hardener cement, still I don't know it remains hardener cement for the pull up. So these problems are there. So, okay. So this is the theory of uh, semi stable vector bundle. So here, what is happening? My rank is of V is two. Then uh, perhaps I'm not saying it right. So uh, if fs upper star v is not semi stable for some s, then 
by harder nasiman theory there is a line bundle sitting inside fs upper star e and this is the harder nasiman filtration okay so okay talk, having talk about all these things so what is the coming back to the hk multiplicity so this one is telling me if i have this l and s so so you forget about this generality so and consider the suzuki bundle v for that so v f upper star v i'm oh, sorry i don't know what's happening s minus 1 iterated of v they are all semi stable and fs upper star v is not semi stable so that's a num n the harder nasiman filtration which is here fs upper star v so that means mu of l should be greater than mu of f this one so this is equal to l mod 2 so so i come back looking at this number so this is telling me at which stage your bundle will destabilize till then it will remain semi stable if s is this one is zero that means your bundle is going to remain semi stable for all s that means so this s is telling me the place where uh, it frobenius iteration where the bundle is not going to remain semi stable and this number l is telling me how much it has destabilized so so these are so hk so if you have these two information you know hk multiplicity then compute it right away so generally this is that's not easy so on the other hand suppose if i know the hk multiplicity of sm by chance this is there some number then and p is uh, greater than d into d minus 3 then recover l and s so for p bigger than this number hk multiplicity will tell give me the information about the harder nasiman filtration of your uh, vector bundle so this is the crucial point here so coming back to your uh, coming back to our example of uh, monsky so this is uh, so d is actually 4 so it is 3 plus this thing so this is telling you something so hm example so it is telling you if p is congruent to plus or minus 1 mod 8 then fs upper star v is semi stable for all s for all s i mean and if p is congruent to plus or one minus 3 mod 8 then oh, i'm sorry this is uh, f upper star v is not same as stable so this this example is a bit of a surprise for vector bundle uh, people who work in vector bundle because the thing is generally if suppose v is semi stable in characteristic 0 then v reduction mod p is semi stable for all p positive so the semi stability condition is an open condition that means but this one is saying however if i look at the frobenius pullback condition this this is not an open condition i may start in characteristic zero the bundle which is semi stable so of course it is going to be semi stable for any all finite pullbacks but this this is not an open condition so so this so just a computation of hk multiplicity gave you this example so so are there any questions no no not any question okay so talking of uh, coming back to this example of monsky so it tells you that uh, 
for infinitely many p things uh, can uh, it doesn't achieve minimal and for infinitely uh, infinitely infinitely many p it can differ means there's no open uh, open criteria for this hk multiplicity but uh, there is something nice i said that this l is bounded so as p tends to infinity this number is going to be zero so so this leads to the open question so you have a r m k so r is the noetherian local noetherian local ring and residue field here and uh, characteristic of k is zero and now r p m p uh, and suppose your ideal is i uh, then m p i p reduction mod p of r m and i so this is let the question is does e h k uh, r p i p uh, limit p times to infinity exist so see the answer to this question will give you a notion of uh, hilbert brucken multiplicity in characteristic zero a well defined notion and also for at least uh, for m primary ideal suppose uh, we know the equivalence of tight closure of an ideal in terms of the hk multiplicity perhaps it will give a notion of tight closure in characteristic zero but of course for the ideal which are m primary so i i really don't know the development there The, so talking of these uh, notions uh, there is notion of epsilon multiplicity i think people can look up so this is kutkowski uh, and all and then there is a generalized uh, i think that's by neil epstein or something i don't know hk multiplicity so these are another different notion of uh, this I don't know what is not there. No rhymes. Ah, uh, one minute. I'm just. Uh, I don't know what happened to my screen. Yeah. Can you see the screen? Oh. No, we cannot see the screen. But is nine fifty? So it, it, what do you oh, think? Oh, thanks, thanks. So should is I stop? The, yeah, I, I mean we can have a ten minute okay. break and come uh, back. Thanks. In, uh, yeah, sure. Ten sure. minutes, and then hopefully we can resolve the screen issue. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah. Let's see if are there any questions for Vijay for the for this lecture. I don't see any questions, so let's thank the speaker. Thank you, and um, we'll take a.